<laughs> Don't mind him. <laughs> He'll tell you to set your alarm for 5.30 and then wake up at like 7. You never asked what time I was waking up. <laughs> Text me at like 10 p.m. Ask me, what time are you going to get up? I tell him 5.30, he just like gives me a thumbs up and then wakes up at 6.30 the next day. No heads up at all, I <laughs> sleep for well, another hour. I was like, I just figured... Hey, you didn't ask. Maybe, yeah. I've been learning a lot about myself outside of the water from my time spent in it. For years and years and years, I was so psychotically driven to push myself in big waves that I almost like shelved the majority of other things going on in my life. There's no other place in my life that I have that amount of focus and everything seems to stop around me. At Jaws, I know it like down to almost like a military schedule, what time I need to be where and can kind of understand the best time of the day to be there and whatnot. So I had everything already set up and ready to go for the swell. Yeah. Morning. I put the skis, the skier ready. I loaded his boat with all the med gear. Okay. It's over there all mm -hmm. ready to go. I'm gonna go load up. I'd refined a lot of my equipment, so my biggest excitement was coming from getting to put some miles on these new fins, new board designs, and everything I'd worked on all summer. Hey, Keith. Yo. Need a hand? Is this Ty's board? No, it's Victor Lopez. OK. And I'm going to throw it up here out of the way. Growing up this close to Jaws has definitely changed the way I see waves in the ocean. So there's definitely an understanding and respect for certain waves. Big waves are really challenging. They're very unpredictable, very dangerous, and when things come together, it can be one of the best moments of your life. And I think it's a really rare opportunity to push yourself at such a high level. Oh, 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 oh. oh wow, look at it rip yeah, that way. Keith, I'm gonna hop in. Neutral. I just have like a sense of calm of this is where I'm supposed to be. There's nowhere else in the world I'd want to be than being a part of this session, watching it unfold, feeling it unfold, and giving yourself an opportunity to really push yourself when you're fearful and control your body when it doesn't want you to. wouldn't inflate because I went so deep. Martin, it's Ian. Um, we're going to pack it up and head in. You guys all good? We're all solid, man. Thank you. You got, you got the, probably the best tube of the day. You have the end there. I'm going to tow it. <laughs> that was a scary sight in there. But it was good. Thanks for the help today. Um, tell Kai that uh, I'll call him later when we get in. Fair enough. Thanks. 
the entire like week of looking at the forecast has looked really good and Mavericks looks as good as you know any swell I've watched in the last four or five years there it's gonna be cold big dark and scary but could be really good could be some really special waves out there I was definitely psyched to go to Mavericks. It's a scary wave, but the wave is really good for a giant wave. There's an incredible slabby bowl, and you get these double ups that kind of just keep reforming. So it can be a very high performance big wave. The other times I've been here have been like cold, dark, stormy, foggy. I've never had it where it's this beautiful. It was like the swell was peaking at the right time, coming from the right angle. The tides were perfect. The winds were incredible all day. And it was just a really unique combination of all those conditions coming together. Oh, here we go. Look at that left. Oh my God. One wave in particular that really stands out for me that day was one that actually didn't go that well. I was just a little bit outside of the bowl, which is the main part of the wave that you see those iconic slabs coming from. And I got this little chip and had full momentum into the wave and it just started to lurch up and get so steep underneath me. And I felt that acceleration, but I was so intently focused on the drop that as soon as I set my edge and looked up as I was projecting down the line, I saw a human in the air upside down and their board flickering like in the golden light. And I had to make a last minute adjustment and try to straighten out. And as I straightened out, I just felt his board just wafting around me and then boom. The impact hit super violent, tumbling underwater, broke my board. He didn't get hurt, I didn't get hurt. But the silver lining to it that stands out to me was the acceleration I felt after such a steep drop. It's very rare in big waves to have your board connect with the face like that and just accelerate. And it just gave me a lot of confidence, like a lot of positives to take away from a really ugly situation. The second Maverick swell popped up on the forecast, very similar to the first one. And we're going into the holidays, so it's just around Christmas time. This swell was slated for uh, January 2nd. So it looked like we we're gonna have the day on the second, and then there'd be a couple down days, and then there was another swell lining up. And on the long range, it looked like two or three more. This is when I started to kind of think, okay, we're in like a pretty wild cycle right now.
Today I took a good hard right turn. Um, around like two o'clock the wind lightened up and it just seemed to like clean up. The ocean had a better texture on it and we had a really fun afternoon towing. When we got to the harbor, we had everything a lot more systematic. We knew what time we wanted to be out there. We knew what the tide would do to the wave. I had an idea it was gonna be big and good, but I was thinking more towards that first swell we went to Mavericks. And then once we started seeing the real numbers on the buoys and, and hearing the concerns from some of the boat captains, like Kai and I both kind of looked at each other like, Holy shit, this might be the biggest day at Mavericks any of us can remember. Oh, oh my god. All day, it had been so intimidating. The waves were moving so fast with so much interval that it was really hard to find entries. Big interval and definitely cold. They're back there. You just have to really gamble those big sets on the head. It's the end of the day now. Took a little break to get some water and pour some boiling water down my wetsuit to try to get the feeling back in my body after being frozen numb. And then I started to work my way out. And in the lineup, I positioned myself a little bit further out and a little bit deeper, hoping I might get one of those chips for a really early entry. And then the set came. And when I came over that first one, it was just right there, like big, giant, scary wall of water. And I felt like I was in a really good spot. And I committed, started to go, felt the momentum, felt the lift, and it just seemed to slab up and have another gear of speed right when I stood up. And I felt like I was on top of it now. And rather than kind of taking a steep entry in and being connected to the face, my tail drifted and I started to adjust my body to absorb the swing weight. And I just couldn't get enough into it. That's when it just was like getting struck by lightning. I just knew right away, like this might be the most violent pounding of your life right now. Oh my God. That was not good. Oh my God. I remember thinking like, let's not waste any oxygen at all and just settle in for the ride. You made this bed, now get ready to just absorb it. Probably the scariest thing to the whole scenario is what I realized right when I surfaced after that wave. I immediately knew to face the next wave and I could see through really blurry, ugly double vision that there was another giant wave coming and I could not gauge its depth perception, how far it was, how close it was. I didn't really have any vision and I could just sense it was getting close. I could hear it and then settled in for that next wave. I was consciously thinking, I need to get out of here. This is different than any beating I've ever had in my life. I came up got my board was right there i got on the jet ski was very close i tried to hang on as best i could and it ripped my left side really hard trying to hold on and then it was just straight off the sled right back into the next wave no chance to even breathe so on the next wave after i fell off the jet ski the vision's still not quite there the jet ski was coming in and i was seeing two of him so Right before I surfaced on the next wave, I pulled the pin on my leash to release the board. That way, all I need to do is get on the jet ski. We can deal with the board later. 
Our second safety driver was there and I was able to get up onto the sled. And then I got on the ski and I remember telling Jeff, like, I can't see. And then 30 seconds, a minute went by and then everything started coming back. The vision came back, but that was a violent ride. <laughs> violent ride. How are you, Ian? Went to the, I just did some time travel underwater. <laughs> that was up there with the worst beatings I've ever had. Do oh. you need help? It hit me so violently, it sent me into another dimension where I was just like hovering over the whole scenario, watching it from above. Now we have like a dimension level of how pounded you get. <laughs> This jaw swell was definitely shaping up to be a toe day. Moving into that swell, my headspace is, it's time to push the toe equipment. You know, you'll still bring all your gear out there, your paddle boards and everything, but this one looks like a point blank toe day. Sleep good? Slept good, yeah. Finally, a week later, it took me about five days to feel somewhat normal after that fall at Mavericks. <laughs> so we got out there and things were a little bit slow and you could tell it was, it was building, but it was inconsistent, a new building swell. And my brother, Sean, went out to get a couple waves and then he just got a hog, like, out of the depths of the ocean, he gets a bomb, the first big wave of the day. And it was like this giant, beautiful blue wave. He, you know, kicked out in the channel and it was just like, game on. really defined the day for me personally. And one was kind of an ugly wave. It was a big double up and it had a giant wave before it and it hit this whitewash line. So there was a lot of turbulent water. But I remember towing in and having so much speed and so much response out of the fins that I was able to put the board on a dime where I wanted it. Going that fast, turning that hard on a wave of that size, like Formula One car driving on like a 50 foot banked wall. Full speed, as much as you can put into it, you can go and it's just gonna drive you out of there if your equipment's laced up. That just kinda set the session onto like a different trajectory and I just felt really stable, really confident and I had a lot of energy. such a roller coaster of emotions today that like every wave was the bumpiest wave of my life. In the last few years, I've been able to really find a good balance of enjoying the aspects that happen outside of the water and the build up to these giant swells. It's all the anxiety, all the stress, all the preparation that goes into making sure you have an opportunity to maybe get one of those really special waves. So finding 
a really deep sense of appreciation for both ends of the swell and the swell itself has been something that has helped me tremendously. Looking back on the season in hindsight, there were so many positives to take out of those waves that it really drives me into next season. And I feel like every winter I've had where I've taken a step back and looked at it, I have so much more motivation going into the next one. So much momentum's moving forward that I just want to keep harnessing that season after season. One of my goals is to be the best big wave surfer on the planet. So I feel like if I can just push myself every single time I get in the water on those days when it feels right for me, then I'm going in the right direction.